If your site sells products or services online, you can use Google Analytics e-commerce reporting to track sales activity and performance. The e-commerce reports show you your site's transactions, revenue, and many other e-commerce related metrics. The overview report and the top level navigation are shown here. Many of the reports allow you to drill down and segment for in-depth analysis. Some examples of the kind of information you can get from the e-commerce reports include the products that were purchased from your online store, your sales revenue, your e-commerce conversion rate, and the number of times people visited your site before purchasing. E-commerce metrics are also available on the e-commerce tab which appears in many reports. For example, on the e-commerce tab of the AdWords campaigns report, you can see how much revenue is associated with your AdWords campaigns. On the e-commerce tab of the referring sites report, you can see how many transactions are associated with site referrals. And on the e-commerce tab of the all traffic sources report, you can see the per visit value across all traffic sources. In order to use e-commerce reporting, you'll need to do three things. First, enable e-commerce reporting within your analytics website profile. Second, add or make sure that you've added the Google Analytics tracking code to your receipt page or transaction complete page. Finally, you'll need to add some additional e-commerce tracking code to your receipt page so that you can capture the details of each transaction. Let's take a look at each step. Step one is simply to enable the e-commerce selection on the edit profile information page. Here's how you find it. On the analytics settings page, click edit next to the profile for which you want to enable e-commerce tracking. This will take you to the profile settings page. At the top of the page, you'll see a section called main website profile information. Click edit in the top right corner. You'll then see the screen shown here. Select yes next to e-commerce website and save your changes. For step two, add the Google Analytics tracking code to your receipt page. In step three, you'll be adding some e-commerce tracking code to the basic tracking code. Here's an example of what the e-commerce tracking code on your receipt page might look like. Remember, you'll be sandwiching this code into the basic Google Analytics tracking code. In the first part of the code, there is a call to the addTrans method. The call to addTrans tells Google Analytics that a transaction has occurred. The arguments to addTrans provide details about the transaction. For example, an order ID, the total order amount, and the amount of tax charged. After the call to add trans, there must be at least one call to the add item method. This call provides Google Analytics with details about the specific item purchased. Finally, there is a call to the track trans method, which sends all the data to Google Analytics. Let's look at each method in more detail. The add trans method establishes a transaction and takes the arguments shown here. Your code will need to dynamically retrieve the values from your merchant software to populate these fields. You can type single quote, single quote to leave an optional field blank, but note that order ID and total are required. For each item that a visitor purchases, call add item. If more than one item is purchased, you'll call add item multiple times. As with add trans, you can leave some of the fields blank, but note that order ID, SKU or code, price and quantity are required arguments. Use the same order ID that you used in the call to add trans. If you're not sure how to write this code, contact your merchant software provider. Finally, after the calls to add trans and add item, you'll need to call track trans to send the transaction information to Google Analytics. Remember that all of the e-commerce code must appear after the Google Analytics tracking code calls track page view. Generally, you'll be placing e-commerce tracking code on a secure shopping cart page. The standard Google Analytics tracking code automatically detects when an HTTPS protocol is being used. So you won't need to add any special tracking code for secure pages. For many e-commerce websites, the checkout process occurs on a separate domain or subdomain. For example, if you send customers from www.mystore.com to cart.mystore.com, you're sending them to a subdomain. If either of these scenarios applies to your site, you'll need to add some code to some of your pages so that you can track activity across domains and subdomains. 
The specific methods you'll use are listed on the slide, and you can learn how to use them in the module on tracking domains and subdomains.